Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today I'm going to use Photoshop Elements to create this Game of Thrones Season 3 effect. It's got the Braveheart effect kind of going on here. It's blue on one side, a little bit pastel -y on the other side with a lot more clarity and depth in this. So let's get started. I'm going to open this in the Photoshop Raw Editor. Now I want to do that because there are a few things like shadows and the white balance. Those are the things that I like to use in the Adobe Camera Raw before opening them in Photoshop Elements. So as before, let's go to the File, then Open. Now I want to thank Tommy Tomerton over here he's got this great photo now you do need a forward facing photo I'm going to click on this once then I'm going to change the format to camera raw now it may take a little while to open it in the camera raw depending upon your type of computer and how much memory you have so I'm going to select open and here we have this great looking photo it's a forward facing photo and I'm going to start off by taking the temperature and I want to move this over to a little bit to the yellow so I'm going to bump this up now it's going to depend upon your picture whether or not you're going to use the same numbers that I'm using here in my Adobe Camera Raw the next thing that we want to do is bump up the pinks just a little bit to give it that pastel -y look so we wanted a little bit more pink over there so I'm bumping up that pink actually bumping it up quite a bit it's more on the yellow and the pink so it's starting to look a little pastel-y now I definitely want to bump the clarity up a lot because it's kind of a gritty looking picture so I'm going to bring that up pretty high looks, looks good about here at 75 now what I want to do is I want to bump down the vibrance. I'm not going to bump down the saturation. These two are just a little bit different. So I'm going to bump down the vibrance just a little bit. Give it that pastel-y look right in here. And that's starting to look really nice. The next thing I want to do is I want to darken my shadows. So I'm going to take my shadows. I'm going to bring them all the way down because we want to have kind of a dark dark looking picture right there. If I wanted to I could take down the blacks just a tiny bit. Now we want to be careful that we don't lose this area right in here. We love the reflections in the eyes. Now that's about where I want it right now. The rest we're going to fix in Photoshop Elements. So let's select open image there. Now that's a great starting point for our picture. I'm going to add a few adjustment layers which are these little black and white cookie tool adjustments and what those do is that adds an adjustment layer on top of our photo so that it doesn't affect the original photo. The first one I'm going to add is I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer right here. Then I'm going to make this a little more contrasty by bringing in the white slider just a tiny bit if I draw it all the way to the left you can kind of see that it brings the highlights up so we want to bring the highlights up to right where they're starting to get a little blown out which is right about here normally that lines up with the peak of the levels the next thing I'm going to do is drag the right side in making the blacks just a tiny bit blacker right over here and this is our midtones right there and we can bring up the midtones to give the midtones a little bit more brightness or make it a little more foreboding by bringing it over to the right just a little bit. Now when I'm happy with that I can click the little X on the top there and get rid of that. Now what I want to do is I want to add a second adjustment layer right over here. I'm going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer to get to the blue side. I'm first going to check the colorize box and then I'm going to swing the hue to where it's more of a cyan color right in here because that's the, what our picture looked like was cyan and then I'm going to bump up the saturation here I really want to get that saturated look so I've got that cyan which is the one half of our photo I may even want to bring this up just a tiny bit more and the saturation and bring down the lightness just a tiny bit alright and there we have it I'm going to 
click off the X right in there. Now you're saying that really does not look like my photo. I'm going to go back to the preview and let you look at that. That's not really looking like my photo very well. As you can see, we have a lot of clarity here. I bumped up the clarity on mine. Now we're going to get that line in the face. And as you notice, it goes around and it follows the dark areas. Well, we need a few dark areas in here to be able to do that. I'm going to click on the background layer and then Command J or duplicate our layer. And then I'm going to take my dodge and burn tools. I'm going to click on that dodge tool right there and then under the options select the burn tool and as you can see there's my brush right there I might make it just a tiny bit smaller by using the left bracket key then right where there are any shadows we want to quickly that's a little bit too much we want to quickly go over any areas where she has some shadows and we want to darken those shadows up just a little bit to give it some more contrast so anywhere you see some shadows, we're going to darken those shadows up just a tiny bit right in here. That gives us an area where we can line up our blue as compared to our pastel. Once you have the dark areas, we can select the hue and saturation command right over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to erase this area right here so that it becomes the original color. And how you erase that using a mask is you paint with the black. So I am going to pick a paintbrush right in here. I'm going to select a fairly large paintbrush right in here. If you don't already have it, select the brush settings here and make sure your hardness is at zero. That gives us a nice feathered brush. And watch what happens when I paint with black on that layer. As you can see, the blue starts to go away and it starts to reveal the other color. Now what we want to do is we want to paint right along that area where it was dark, right along her nose. It went in a little bit right where her hair and her forehead were. And then it followed along right there, right along the chin line and then so we're starting to look pretty good right now. I'm going to erase this so we have this area. Now I want to add another layer. And how I'm going to do that is click this dog ear icon right there. Click on the foreground palette. Then we type in 110, 110, and 110. And it gives us this nice neutral gray. Then I'm going to take that same brush, make it a little bit smaller, and then I'm going to start to paint. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to change this right here into an overlay status as a blending mode and watch what happens when I start to paint right in where the dark areas are. Once again it's very much like dodging and burning. We're adding another layer of dodging and burning here and we're going to do that on both sides of our photo right in where these dark shadowy areas are. We want to give it a lot of contrast. Right anywhere where there's a dark area we're going to give it contrast. So keep painting right along here until it's just really really contrasty. It has that nice Game of Thrones effect right there. And there we have it. So we're starting to look pretty good right there. Now if you want to look at this original preview right here it's starting to look nice, but some of these areas don't look quite as blue. So what I need to do now is I need to go back to our hue and saturation adjustment layer right here. And I still need to paint away some of this area where the highlights are so the highlights aren't quite as blue. And I'm going to do that by using a very small brush and taking our opacity down to about 6%. And then I'm going to paint very lightly in those highlighted areas on her face. So it looks more like lighting as compared to me taking a blue layer and putting it over her face. So anywhere there's lighter areas, lighter areas in her hair, we're going to paint black on those areas to make it look 
more like it is light hitting her face rather than, like I said, an adjustment layer that's over her head. And once we have those lighter areas painted in with a little less blue on them, we're starting to look like that blue and white Game of Thrones effect. Now, if you want a little bit more of this adjustment, we can click on this layer and select Command J right in here. And once again, we can bring this and paint a little bit more on that layer so maybe it's not quite as blue. Now, if it's a little bit too much blue, of course, we can always take that opacity down and bring it down just a tiny bit so that it's not quite as much on her face. And there we have it. We have that nice bluish Game of Thrones effect. Now, over here, you'll notice that there's a little bit too much distraction. And on the Game of Thrones, they really crop that area in. So I'm going to take my crop tool. I'm going to crop that in right over here like this. And then hit enter. And there we have it. You have that nice Game of Thrones effect. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, and pass my video on to your friends. Cheers!